The Eckert Mockley Computer Corporation (EMCC), March 1946 to 1950, was founded by J. Presper Eckert and John Mockley. It was incorporated on December 22, 1947. After building the ENIAC at the University of Pennsylvania, Eckert and Mockley formed EMCC to build new computer designs for commercial and military applications. The company was initially called the Electronic Control Company, changing its name to Eckert Mockley Computer Corporation when it was incorporated. In 1950, the company was sold to Remington Rand, which later merged with Sperry Corporation to become Sperry Rand, and survives today as Unisys. Topic. Founding Before founding Eckert Mockley Computer Corporation, Mockley researched the computing needs of potential clients. Over a period of six months in 1944 he prepared memos and kept detailed notes of his conversations. For instance, Mockley met with United States Census Bureau official William Maddow to discuss the computing equipment they desired. The Census Bureau was particularly keen on reducing the number of punch cards it had to manage with each census. This meeting led to Maddow making a trip to CENIAC in person. Mockley also met with Lieutenant Colonel Solomon Kulbach, an official at the Army Signal Corps, to discuss codes and ciphers. Kulbach said there was a need for many, faster and more flexible, computers at his agency. Mockley responded by carefully analyzing EDVAC's potential encryption and decryption abilities. Eckert and Mockley thus believed there was strong government demand for their future products. By the spring of 1946, Eckert and Mockley had procured a U.S. Army contract for the University of Pennsylvania and were already designing the EDVAC, the successor machine to the ENIAC, at the university's Moore School of Electrical Engineering. However, new university policies that would have forced Eckert and Mockley to sign over intellectual property rights for their inventions led to their resignation, which caused a lengthy delay in the EDVAC design efforts. After seeking to join IBM and John von Neumann's team at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, they decided to start their own company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. UNIVAC Mockley persuaded the United States Census Bureau to order an EDVAC-2 computer, a model that was soon renamed UNIVAC, receiving a contract in 1948 that called for having the machine ready for the 1950 census. Eckert hired a staff that included a number of the engineers from the Moore School, and the company launched an ambitious program to design and manufacture large-scale computing machines. A major achievement was the use of magnetic tape for high-speed storage. During development Mockley continued to solicit new customers and started a software department. They developed applications, starting with the world's first compiler for the language short code. Topic. Accusations of communist infiltration EMCC also received contracts for one UNIVAC machine each for the Army, Navy, and Air Force. These contracts were eventually cancelled after the company was accused of having hired engineers with communistic leanings. During the McCarthy era, the company lost its clearance for government work. Company president and chief salesman Mockley was banned from the company property. He challenged the accusations, but it took two years before a hearing allowed him to work at his company again. By then, the UNIVAC was seriously behind schedule. The programming to allow the UNIVAC I to be used in predicting the outcome of the 1952 presidential election had to be done by Mockley and University of Pennsylvania statistician Max Woodbury at Mockley's home in Ambla, Pennsylvania. Topic. BINAC and fiscal difficulties Cash flow was poor and the UNIVAC would not be finished for quite some time, so EMCC decided to take on another project that would be done quickly. This was the BINAC, a small computer compared to ENIAC for the Northrop Corporation. Original estimates for the development costs proved to be extremely unrealistic, and by the summer of 1948, EMCC had just about run out of money, but it was temporarily saved by Harry L. Strauss, vice president of the American Totalisator Company, a Baltimore company that made electromechanical totalisators. Strauss felt that EMCC's work, besides being promising in general terms, might have some application in the racetrack business, and invested $500,000 in the company. Strauss became chairman of the EMCC board, and American Totalisator received 40% of the stock. When Strauss was killed in an airplane crash in October 1949, American Totalisator's directors withdrew their support. BINAC was eventually delivered in 1949, but Northrop complained that it never worked well for them. 
It had worked fine in acceptance tests at EMCC, but Northrop, citing security concerns, refused to allow any EMCC employees onto their site to reassemble it after shipping. Instead, Northrop hired a newly graduated electrical engineer to assemble it. EMCC claimed that the fact that it worked at all after this was testimony to the quality of the design. It was generally believed at EMCC that Northrop allowed BINAC to sit, disassembled, in their parking lot for a long time before any effort toward assembly was made. Topic. Sale to Remington Rand As had happened with BINAC, EMCC's estimates of delivery dates and costs proved to be optimistic, and the company was soon in financial difficulty again. In early 1950, the company was for sale. Potential buyers included National Cash Register and Remington Rand. Remington Rand made the first offer and purchased EMCC on February 15, 1950, whereupon it became the UNIVAC division of Remington Rand. The first UNIVAC was not delivered until March 1951, over a year after EMCC was acquired by Remington Rand, and too late to help much for the 1950 census. However, upon acceptance at the company premises, truckload after truckload of punched cards arrived to be recorded on tape by what was called jokingly the card to pulp converters for processing by UNIVAC. The U.S. Census Bureau used the prototype UNIVAC on EMCC premises for months. Mockley resigned from Remington Rand in 1952, his 10-year contract with them ran until 1960, and prohibited him from working on other computer projects during that time. Remington Rand merged with Sperry Corporation in 1955, and in 1975, the division was renamed Sperry UNIVAC. The company's corporate descendant today is Unisys. <laughs> 